Today I'm going to be showing you how you can get food for free when you're on the coast, essentially allowing you to live for free on the coast. I'm going to be showing you about five different methods, the first of which being a shallow pot left overnight just on the shorefront. And you can see we've got a big boy conger eel in there. So it can take a while to get these bad boys out. They've got razor sharp teeth as well. And I didn't want to have a finger bitten off. But this guy's too small. We're not going to be eating him. Let's chuck him back in. Conger eels are pretty common to catch, but there are way tastier options out there. If you're lucky enough to have access to a kayak, you can drop your pots a lot deeper out. Which make them more likely to be stumbled upon by a fat juicy lobster or other big critters. But really, anywhere rocky or reefy should yield good results and you'd be surprised how much you can catch right on the shoreline. The most common catch in pots are velvet crabs, which are delicious, albeit a little fiddly to eat. They must have a minimum carapace width of 65 millimeters to land and you can land as many as you like. Prawns are caught by the dozen in the right season and have no landing size or quantity restrictions. I love catching these guys. Lobsters are a much more common catch than you'd expect. Mouthwateringly delicious, they are my favourite to catch and must have a 90mm long carapace to be kept with no quantity restrictions. That's amazing. Well over the legal limit. So we'll be having that for dinner. You can also catch brown crabs, which look like cool little Pokemon and are pretty tasty too. They must have a carapace of 130 or 140 millimeters, depending how far north you are. Fish are often caught in the traps. We've got another rock goby. Rock gobies seem to be the species that work their way in most often and can be a tasty addition to dinner. So that's what you'll catch most of the time in traps and it will mostly be a mixed bag of different species. I took this right to the other side of the reef where it drops off. I was hoping for a lobster overnight. I didn't get a lobster, but we got a few prawns, a couple velvet crabs and a few rock gobies. A lobster and so many prawns. Yeah. Look at that. And when you do catch a mixed bag of lobsters, prawns and crabs, it's a feast that tops any seafood restaurants. And the next method is a pull net. You'll want to go a bit deeper than this and you'll need a kayak. But basically this ring lies flat on the reef. You've got some bait in the middle. You leave it down there for half an hour. This works best at night time. In the day you won't catch much. The prawns, the crabs, hopefully a lobster, come on towards the bait and then you yank it up real fast. The G-force keeps them in and you can pick out the prawns. Oh, a few prawns, look at all of them. That's sick, look at all of them. <laughs> Bang in, mate. Yeah. It's mostly prawns you catch in the pool nets, but occasionally a wandering lobster will come join the party. I make sure I always stick to the legal limits so as to preserve the local ecosystems. I never take more than I need and will chuck back any surplus. This one's too small, it's below the legal limit, so we're going to chuck him back. If you don't have any traps, no worries, it's really easy to make your own from plastic washed up on the beach. Here's a trap I made out of a plastic bottle that I cut the top off, inverted, to create a funnel that the pools could enter and then struggle to leave. I left it overnight and caught about 12 prawns on this very reef. You can try catch prawns with a flashlight and a kiddies net, but I only ever seem to catch babies, so I usually just let the pots work for me. You've got all sorts of kelp, bladderwrack, as well, all over the English coast. There are a few different seaweeds you can eat. Bladder rat contains high levels of iodine, so only wants to be eaten in small quantities. Kelp is a very common edible seaweed too, but to be honest, I tend to avoid seaweed and forage for edible coastal plants, like rock samphire, sea kale, and sea beet or sea spinach. I tend to chuck a few of these forage greens in a pot with my prawns and crabs. 
And another method is if you wait for the tide to go out, these beautiful rocks reveal a bounty of food. Right here, we've got heaps of limpets. These are full of protein, they're quite tasty too. And we've got sea snails. These rocks are teeming with food if you know how to identify and process it. And every year, for two to three months, as spring turns to summer, we get an invasion of spider crabs all along the coast of the South UK. Little tiddly one. Not the big fatty you came for. All you need to do is don a wet suit, jump in the water, and you can grab these with your bare hands. Of course, fishing is a great way to catch fish, and cod, pollock, bass and wrasse make for some tasty dining. When it comes to cooking, let your imagination run wild. I usually boil lobsters and crabs with my greens, but prefer prawns fried with a nice garlic sauce. So next time you're down the coast, why don't you try some of these methods, try get yourself some free food. Let me know how it goes. All the best, catch you next time.